Hey guys, I wanted to show you this cool piece of terrain I've been working on. So, it probably doesn't look like it, but the whole build cost me about one dollar. So it started with this piece of junk from a thrift shop, which was sold for 45 cents. I decided I wanted to separate the one piece into at least two halves and then I could build sort of a relative building shape out of it. I like this piece because it already had a lot of detail like these pipes and there's even what looked like bullet holes in the sides of these plastic bricks. So I put it on a piece of MDF and I'm using a 28 millimeter figure to make sure things are in scale like I want to make sure the doorways are big enough for a figure's base to get through for example once I'm happy with its placement I go around with a hot glue gun and fix it in place in order to rough out the shape I'm just going to use some of this cheap packaging foam and little scraps of XPS foam I start roughing out the general shape of this ruin. I know I want a bunch of ruins piled up inside of the building, but I still want them relatively flat so that miniatures can stand on. The yellow plastic tank came from a toy train that was bought secondhand. So here's the ruin so far. I've used some pieces of about five millimeter cork broken up to give it some more variety. I knew the plastic brick walls were too thin, so what I've done is I've taken 5mm foam board scraps and I'm going around and using some plastic clips and some PVA glue and attaching the foam to the plastic walls in order to fill them out more. I decided to go a different way on the doorway. So I have these plastic Necromunda looking bulkheads, they're 3D printed and this one's a partially open doorway and I flanked it with these sort of cheap mega blocks that I got from Goodwill by the pound. Pretty much everything here is from Goodwill or Goodwill by the pound. Here's this thing I thought of as I started building it. The toy is going to act as a guide for my hot wire as I go around and it's going to make this foam follow the brick texture pretty closely. So I realized I wanted a roof over the doorway. So what I did was I put a piece of foam board on the top and then I took this piece, it's part of some sort of plastic construction toy. I got a bunch of those at Goodwill by the pound. And I used the back of a legal pad, some chipboard and traced out the shape of it so I could glue it to the top. It's important when you're working with plastic to light sand everything, not just for paint to adhere to it, but also for glue. Right here I'm just using a little bit of PVA glue and I'm going to press that card to the top. Now I know I wanted some more detail on the top. I had these little rubber pads by 3M. I don't know what they came from but I decided they would make an interesting feature on the top of the doorway. So I took three of them and I spaced them equidistantly on top. 
And then I decided I want to put rivets on each of those because it is 40K, you have to have rivets. I found the easiest way for me to do rivets is put the super glue down first and then use a uh, X-Acto knife and move around and just place the rivets in the super glue that's already there. These rivets were made with a one millimeter hole punch and I usually punch little plastic tabs that come with uh, bread, little bread tabs. Once I had that in place, there were some pieces on the side that needed to be covered up. So I just cut some triangles out of the chipboard, went around with super glue. I put a little cardboard straw there and kind of messed up the edge to uh, have like an industrial pipe looking thing beside the doorway there. And I filled in some of the gaps with hot glue. Another detail was dunking pieces of paper clip and a little bit of glue and stabbing them into some of the foam so they could be rebar. For gap filling, I started with some of the vinyl spackle, drywall spackle. And I started going around with the little spade, but um, you might have an easier time just using your fingers. Things don't have to be perfect, remember it's a ruin. So I have a um, black Mod Podge mix. It's just black paint, a little bit of dish soap, and Mod Podge. And I decided before I went to this next step, I wanted to cover up all the MDF with this Mod Podge to protect it. So I've got this old air dry clay. I kind of wanted to use it up. And I want to use it for a gap filler for the bigger parts in the ruins. I figured uh, it didn't matter if it cracked or whatever because that's the busted part of the building and it worked okay it was a little difficult to work with it was very dry very old i added rivets to the yellow fuel tank and a plastic panel to cover up that hole where our screw is it could be a warning label or something and I decided I wanted some busted bricks, so I looked at the relative size of the bricks and just eyeballed some out of XPS scraps. I don't have a lot of rocks, otherwise I would have put rocks in a jar and just shook them up with it. Instead, I went around with a rock and some tin foil and tried to give these bricks some texture. And I decided to make my own sculpt -a mold with Plaster Paris, some ripped up toilet paper, and some PVA glue, and some water, and I mixed all that up. Working with something like a sculpt -a mold is a lot easier than using old air dry clay. Once that was done, I took a bunch of those XPS bricks that I made to match this building, and I just filled in there to make it look like the rubble of the building. I put some outside of the building's walls as well. And I put in a plastic barrel wedged in the wall there. While that was still wet, I went around with a salt shaker full of tile grout to give it some more texture and also harden the surface some more. Then I had medium and small stones and fine grit. And I went around and added those with some watered down wood glue. So now you can see there's a lot of variety to that rubble. Once that's dry, I went back with a Mod Podge wash again, black paint, some dish soap, water, and Mod Podge. And I covered everything that wasn't plastic. I want the plastic to stay bare so when I spray it with a plastic spray paint, it really adheres well.
All right, so once that was dry, I went out and I used some Rust-Oleum 2X flat in black and I painted the piece. I always like this step because it unifies everything and you can kind of see what your piece of work is going to look like. So at first I dabbled with some dark brown paint, touching up some of the metal parts. And then I decided I needed to work on the stone first because it's just a much larger part of the building. So I started with a, a medium gray. I added a little bit of blue paint to it to see if I could give it kind of a hue. I don't really know if it made much effect to the color. So everything that's stone or rubble I went around and I covered in that medium gray color. Then I went over that medium gray with just a black wash. So this is just watered down black paint with a little bit of just soap. No Mod Podge in this one. Once that was dry, I went around and I started painting all of my metal parts with a base of that burnt umber, that dark brown color. Which is a really good contrast to that gray. I decided I want even more contrast so I took sort of a latte color and there's a lower course of a building that's separate and I went around and stippled that in that coffee latte color. It just breaks up all the grayness. When that was dry I went back to my gray and I got a uh, I think this is Steel Gray by Apple Barrel Craft Paint. And I started stippling with a sponge, coloring that concrete part, and then sponging around all the bricks. Then I dry brushed it. The color I'm using here is barn wood. Barnwood is sort of a grayish tan. I like to use it as a highlight color. Then I went in with a slightly lighter coffee latte color just to give it some contrast. When miniatures are this small, they can't pick up light the way something at full scale would, so it helps to um, almost overdo it a little. I dry brushed the metal parts with a little bit of silver paint. I decided I wanted the doorway to be a chippy black, so I just used a cheap brush and uh, some craft black and just stippled that color. And then I went back and dry brushed it with silver again. I dry brushed the little bits of rebar and all the little details on the building, anything that I think is metal. You can see I've got a toy car tire right there. I just glued that on and painted it black. And then there's that pipe that's near the doorway. I wanted some wiring coming out of it and I'm not even gonna paint these. I just selected three different colors, red, green, and blue. And then I stripped the edge of the wire with a razor blade and twisted up the little copper wires a little bit. I taped the bundle at the bottom and covered it in PVA glue and shoved it into that paper straw there. That glue will dry clear and I dropped a little bit of super glue down there too. Next step for the building is a little bit of black wash in these indented areas, the cracks in the bullet holes and in some of the areas to give it some shading. This is above the doorway. Just trying to get those lower areas darker. 
Then I used a little bit of watered down um, brown paint to make it so the rust is streaking down the bricks. See there's a piece of rebar exposed there and I have a little bit of rust that's going to come down the building. Maybe these rivets are rusting a little bit. You can go around with a little bit of black paint and dry brush some parts to give it sort of a look like burnt, like ash in the building. I wanted to add some more fine details. So on this little coffee stir stick, I added some little uh, soda cans and a container and some skulls from the Citadel Skulls box. And I just base coated all of that with an army painter skeleton bone. This is not a necessary step for everybody, but I just felt like giving it some more details with this. So what I'm doing is I'm just watering down this brown paint and I'm just gonna wash these skulls with this acrylic wash. I do this on the skulls about three times, let them dry each time, go back, do another wash, do another wash. Okay, as for those containers, I decided to look at an ad that came in the mail and find something that was appropriate for that jug and also some for the soda cans. I decided that this ad for cat litter or cat food would be good for that plastic jug. And that's going to be my label. So check this out. I covered that jug in PVA glue and I sized the label and wrapped it around and let it dry that way. Once that was done, I looked at these soda bottles and decided that the labels would be a good size for the cans. The cans and the jugs, they all came from Green Stuff World. You can buy a pack and it comes with tons of uh, different soda cans and jugs that can be oil jugs or other containers. So I decided to go with Sprite this time. Just a little bit of watered down glue. Stick the label on, paint the rest green. And in the case of the Tidy Cats jug, I painted it yellow. I have one standing up can and one crushed can. Once that's dry, I just snap it off of the stir stick, add a little bit of super glue to it, and I'm gonna stick it in the ruin like it's some trash from the street. You can see I've got the jug amidst the ruins. And I've got a crushed can up there on the second floor. It's just little things that add little details to it. And then a couple of skulls among the ruins, just super glued. Another crushed one there among the rubble. Okay, so another finishing step is using these artist pastels, these chalk pastels. I use the back of a razor and scrape the pastels in there and get a dry brush and move them around. I want to show the shadow at this scale. I also want to make it look like the building has been burned. There's a lot of uh, ash and dust. You can see use browns, use black. You can see the shadows really well represented below that tire there. And then near the doorway. So yeah, that's it guys. I hope you like this build. I had a lot of fun making it. You never know how something's going to turn out until it's really done. But you just have an idea in your mind and you just start winging it. Well, thanks for sticking with me. If you guys like this sort of thing, I'd appreciate it if you like and subscribe.